let me start memorizing now and how will i go about it so i said i will move to mosque and i will be waking up at night one o'clock a.m so i will make sure that uh, i memorize daily i revise or recite as the case may be then use you daily Meet my Ustaz, my Quran teacher, Sheikh Abdul Hafiz Abdul Aziz Agi Yemako. I will be showing you a day in his life and he will also share with us his Quran journey. We are going to start our early morning class. This is the first period in the day, besides the uh, midnight class. So we have one, uh, one and a half hours class now. So there's a midnight class before. Yes, yes, so that is that starts from three o'clock. This is what you do every day. Of course. <laughs> حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم وأن الله سميع عليم كدأ بآل فرعون والذين من قبلهم كذبوا بآيات ربهم فأهلكناهم بذنوبهم وأغرقنا آل فرعون وكل كانوا ظالمين إن شر الدواب عند الله الذي فرحتي أنسي رفيقي عدتي في يوم ضيقي نعمة الله علينا إن شاء الله we are going to Al-Qura College now so I want to go and meet some teachers and students at our college في يوم ضيقي نعمة الله so, I'm وما لكم لا تقاتلون في سبيل الله والمستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان الذين يقولون الذين يقولون ربنا أخرجنا من هذه القرية الظالم أهلها واجعل لنا من لدنك وليا وَاجْعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا وَاجْعَلْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ نَصِيرًا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ الطَّاغُوتِ فَقَاتِلُوا أولياء الشيطان إن كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا. I think I was thinking the you told me that you recited the Quran, the whole Quran, like in a day. I've done it like more than three two times. I completed the Quran. So, yeah, in a day. In a day. Starts from the morning and end. I'll start from the midnight and end before monthly. So it is possible. So you're going to spend like eight hours because, um, um, like, you spend like one hour reciting for Jesus, for Jesus, fifteen minutes. Sometimes it's 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 it reduces. So um, given the nature of the Jesus that you are, you have, uh, so then then since you have the Quran in your memory, when you are walking, you are driving, you are going, coming back, you still reading Quran. فرحتي أنسي رفيقي عدتي في يوم ضيقي 
نعمت الله علينا مصحفي نور الطريق صحتي أنسي رفيقي قدتي في يوم ضيقي نعمت الله علينا مصحفي نور الطريق إنه آيات ربي What advice will you give to working class people? who are like very busy and they still want to find time for the Quran. The most important thing is for somebody to uh, fix Quran in that busy, busy schedule. So if it is consistent, so you are going to make very big outcome, big results out of it. You see, the problem that most people have is because they don't have the time now. So they, they fear that, okay, if I start, the exercise of maybe Quran learning, Quran recitation, Quran memorization. So how am I going to continue? Will I be able to? So don't mind, don't mind, just start. So and um, we make do with that little time that you have been, that you have uh, allocated for, for the something. I have somebody now that only uh, I take, he's, a, he's an adult, I take him online. So and it's just three days in a week. And that's each day is just one hour. Sometimes it's even less than an hour. Sometimes it will reduce to two hours in a week. So just twice. Sometimes it will even be once in a week. And despite that, the person is making fantastic progress in his uh, uh, grand uh, journey. So it's because of the consistency that is there. So, but some people would not even have any time for the Quran. So you have the time. It's only that you have to uh, let Quran be a part of your and let Quran be your priority. That's that's the word. I'm going to Juma, inshallah. Juma Mubarak. وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وتول عنهم حتى حين وأبصر فسوف يبصرون سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر This is my sheikh was going to talk me the Quran and Alhamdulillah, it was a very um, amazing experience. Alhamdulillah. So, this is Ustaz Sheikh Abdul Hafir Abdul Aziz Ayy Mako. Now, so I've already, I've already introduced him to you already. I've said his name. So, but I still want him to introduce himself shortly. And also, I want him to tell us his background and his journey, you know, to becoming an half of the Quran. Now. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي شرفنا بالقرآن الكريم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمين وعلي وصحابه والتابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is عبد الحفيظ عبد العزيز علي ريماكو I'm the I'm native of Ibadan so all my education and life was in Ibadan here so both primary, secondary, and high institution, first degree and second degree. So my Arabic learning as well. So from Darul Ulum al Arabiya, here in Ibadan, then to Ma'ad al Arabi and Nigeria. So graduated there in 2003. So after which I proceeded to Polytechnic Ibadan study computer science and also went to University of Ibadan Arabic and Islamic studies. 
you see that I moved from science department to humanities. So then I finished my first degree, did my NYC service in Adamawa State, Yola. So where I memorized Quran. So after several efforts that had been put in place to memorize Quran. So that is where Allah uh, made the dream come to reality. So then I did my master's afterwards. So started Al Quran school. So for Quran memorization and also Western education. So I think that uh, I've said little. Yeah, about your background. So your journey, you know, when you memorize the Quran, I was the journey. Because I've had some stories already. I wanted to tell my viewers the story. Okay, memorizing Quran was a dream. So that uh, I had nursed ever since I was in Ma'adul Arabi and Nigeria. So I tried personally, I tried also um, um, taking advantage of uh, uh, companions. So among my colleagues then, so we used to do it together. Started from Bakara, maybe to Ali Moran, but we are not uh, um, able to uh, continue. Then after I finished my uh, undergraduates, so I was going to check my uh, posting. So only for me to discover that it was Adamawa State. So then I was not expecting something like that, but I f thought within me that, okay, maybe Allah had reason for that. When I was going to service, uh, one of my mentors so advised that, okay, uh, it's an opportunity for you when you get to service to do three things. Do da'wah, um, you can memorize your Quran as well. Okay, he mentioned two things like that. After I'd spent like um, six months in service, I came to Ibadan, so for a break, uh, it was during Ramadan then, 2010. So when I was going back to uh, the camp, I remember that I had a dream that I was almost uh, missing, almost uh, 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 for, for going. So I thought within me that, oh, if I miss this opportunity, I may not be able to have it again. Because back at home, I have a lot of engagements. I have several madrasa which I direct and where I teach. And I have dawa engagements, doing lecture here and there, and also family commitments as well. I had wife, I had children. Upon my return, I passed by Abuja. I had a stopover at Abuja. Prayed my Isha uh, behind an imam in a particular mosque there, that I, where I passed uh, nights at a friend's uh, place. So the Imam recited Surah to Ra'ad. Surah to Ra'ad. So I could not uh, <laughs> forget. He read Surah to Ra'ad, even though I had not memorized it there. So I was moved. So that also corroborated the fact that, okay, I had a dream that I want to achieve. So upon getting to Adamawa, so after my return from that break, short break, I had planned on the road what i was i going to do that okay it remains just six months less than six months for me to spend at Adamawa. okay let me start memorizing now and ensure that i finish it before i and how will i go about it so i said i will move to mosque because there was a mosque not distant from uh, our um, apartment where we will reside there resided so and I will be waking up at night, 1 o'clock a.m. So I will make sure that uh, I memorize daily and I revise 10 juzu. I revise or recite, as the case may be. If I have memorized, I will re revise. If I have not memorized, I will recite 10 juzu daily. This was born out of my experience that, okay, memorization is easy. Um, um, it's easy. Revision is difficult. So, and you have to have, have plan for revision more than the plan for what. So that was where I started. I started from planning for revision. So even I plan for those that have, mom, have not memorized that, I will be reciting them so that I know that, okay, daily I have to recite 10 gives you. 
and be finishing Quran every 33 days. So then I will now memorize afterwards. So that's how I started. I prayed and Allah accepted the prayer. So like Allah granted me that spiritual strength. So during Ramadan. So because I could not imagine myself uh, entering into that kind of strenuous exercise and being able to achieve it. I was not somebody that uh, was so determined that to do something consistently, ceaselessly for six, five months. So in fact, it was like a dream after I finished. So was it me, but the grace belongs to Allah because uh, what I did was something that if somebody does it beside me, I will marvel. I moved to the mosque. I will wake up one o'clock a.m. So I will start reciting, revising, or memorizing. So we we'll pray subuh before five o'clock. So after five o'clock, I will still revise and had short nap. After which I will now go home to go and dress up and go to school. So my school is not was not distant from the uh, the mosque and the house. So if I don't have anything doing, I'll come back to that mosque. So sometimes when I'm tired, I will take a walk and be revising and uh, memorizing on my own. So that's how I did it. I started and it was getting easy, easier. So sometimes I will have engagements, will travel, you go to meeting, maybe at night, something like that. I will go with my dream. So if we are in a place, not in that much now, I will still wake up that one o'clock a.m. So if I don't have any place to stay inside the maybe apartment or the uh, the location, I will move out, go out and go and pray my tired. You'd read what I'm supposed to read at that particular uh, place. It, is like, it was less than six months that I spent memorizing the, um, the Quran. So sometimes I will memorize four pages. Sometimes I will memorize uh, five, six, seven, like that. It depends on the nature. So how I find it is or the volume of my uh, what I want to revise and the, my schedule for that uh, particular particular day. Sometimes you find some places very easy. So maybe because I'll, I'm conversant with Quran, I used to recite Quran before. So you know you used to do lecture, you will be coming across divine fire. So uh, it's difficult that uh, um, Imam will read uh, like two three pages and I will not be able to say that okay they are reading this surah because of my. Uh, because of being conversant with the Quran, so, so, and then because I also had Arabic uh, knowledge. Uh, knowledge, so I will understand, and you will be carried along when you are memorizing it. So, and you find someone, some of the verses are uh, also easier. I was around thirty when you did this. When I did this, and I told you that I had wife and I had three children, so and I had engagements. So it depends on your what on your desire to do it and the zeal when you have desire so you are committed you sacrifice for whatever that you want to what you want to achieve i had instance of a, a, a student traveling from abuja came down here to come and memorize quran and he had wife you know him now abu mariam uh, so so and he, he was 40 plus then yes he had to he had to dispose one of his of his properties to uh, he sold his car yes uh, you yes, remember <laughs> so he came here so and he came here to memorize quran so if i see people like that so they marvel me and i will embrace them i will also do whatever i can to assist to assist them so what i used to advise is to keep on doing it be consistent with it even if it is just a verse even if it's just for you to be revising what you have memorized don't disconnect from Quran because a day will come that we have the opportunity to continue. Mm. So that's what happened to me. So I had been doing it, been doing it. Then I had the opportunity of traveling. So then I took the advantage. The moment you disconnect from Quran, so it can be red card. That will not be able to what to exactly. connect with it again. You are watching this. Let me tell you, tell you the program that I mean I did here. I came here after my secondary school because there's a program here that you can come here after secondary school. And you can spend a year or two years, depending on how capable you are, you're studying your capacity. Come here, you know, and you memorize the program. So he's hoping I'm going to put the contact of the school of the school in the description and just contact them at any time. And inshallah, if I I I it, inshallah. Then I remember you mentioned some of the memorable time that you had when you're the program. You know, I need like share just a little a little bit to talk about. Okay, one of it is that. Uh, uh, 
memorizing Quran, I was known with that Quran. So, and when the Imam was not there, so in the north, they would say, okay, go and lead the. They made me unofficially the Naibul Imam. <laughs> so that's what it is. So that's how Sohibu Quran, uh, Quran custodian, will be wherever you want. You, you cannot hide it. Because Quran is not something that you'll be doing show off with. Because you have to revise. You have to memorize. You have to recite what you are. Okay, that's the first thing. The second one that I cannot forget. And that will make it uh, compulsory for somebody to have a mentor, to have a teacher that will be reciting Quran too. I did it myself. So I was making mistake and I did not know. And I've memorized it, I've revised it several times. Because I don't want to get disconnected from Quran, even if I'm going to the toilets. Mm. I will switch on the uh, the recorded uh, yeah, so that I will still be, I'll, still be here. I will still be here. Wow. So I was now in the toilets one day and it was Surah to Anyam. So because Surah to Anyam, I took interest in it because it was difficult for me memorizing it. So then the, the reciter was reciting a particular place. When I was making mistake and I did not know. Um, where Allah says, um, whether it led in a Tahozudi, a humla, a bone, while a one were got humor, haya to dunya was a kirby he and to be sell enough some be my cassabat lay sell a ham in Dunilla, he while a young, while a shafi, while in Tadil Kula Adilla, you hoz mean her. I read it, Ubelisu. I've been reading it like Ubelisu, and it's Ubelisu until I, and I say, ah, this reciter made mistake. I had to rush out from the toilet to come and check Quran and find out that I was the one that was making mistake. It was very memorable. So recently, one of my students, so Ustad, we met him today. The Ustad that we met today, was memorizing Quran here. So it was now reading that particular place and read Ube Lisu as well. So then it struck me that, oh, <laughs> the same mistake that I made, somebody else made it. So I could not forget that. But then there was a particular day that I was reciting, reading, reading. And one of my roommates is in Canada now. So he was looking at me, I was pitying me. Because he, was, he could not imagine that somebody was this, uh, uh, relating with Quran all the time. And I said, when are you going to stop this exercise? I said, it's not something that you're going to stop. Because if you stop, you're going to forget it. So I cannot forget the day he said that. And I did not stop. So that is why um, it is very easy for me to, to read Quran, to recite anywhere in the Quran. I make just little or no mistake. Because it's what I do regularly. Because of that experience, and I could not afford that what I suffered for, what I labored for, to miss it. Because if you leave Quran after having suffered for it, so you will increase your suffer, your sufferness, because you are still going to suffer for it. Because by the time you carry it, it will be as if you are just what? You are just memorizing. You better keep on revising it and be reading it regularly. And it is easy for you when you memorize Quran, you are concerned of Quran. You can recite it anywhere, walking, going coming driving so i was i went to lagos yesterday when i was going i read from swatu nisa to maida when i was coming i read swatu anyam and swatu arof and seamlessly because i was driving i was not doing something else i was the okay i had um, somebody a passenger with me in the car and i was just reading so that means i was i was driving and i was reciting quran that's the essence of memorizing quran so I cannot say, okay, because I, I'm driving, I, I have to carry Quran. So that's how easy it is. Lastly, what advice would you give to people that, you know, one, that want to like be people of the Quran, one, but what they are doing, it's hard for them. That's one. And two, teachers of the Quran, too. Because, wallahi, I enjoyed my, my classes with you. Because it's like the way your patience, number one, is something that I learned so much. And uh, it's something that I'm already doing. I'm, I'm like, naturally, when I'm teaching people outside too, you know, I'm just patient with them because I learned it from you. And so if you're the first person that I've seen that is very patient with the student when, when, when learning the Quran. So what advice can you give to people in that direction? Okay, to those that are memorizing Quran, keep it up and keep on guarding it jealously. You have to have your weird in Quran. 
do it regularly. So it is not, it doesn't be uh, behoove a uh, memorizer of Quran to be living Quran and to now be uh, organizing a particular time to do revision, maybe before Ramadan or something. Your Quran should be with you, be in your what? Memory. And your memory is not like memory card, it's not microchip, it is flesh and blood. So you keep it when you keep on what? Devising it. So that is for those that are on the path or that have memorized the Quran. So you that have not memorized it, so you can be like us, you can be like those that are better than we. Uh, so by also following the full steps. So there is no shortcuts. So you cannot use Iliham to, work for it. to, to, uh, to get it. So you have to work for it. You have to sacrifice. You have to keep vigil. You have to move away from your comfort zone. So, and you have to part with other engagements that are occupying or, or that you, that are not essential. So you are memorizing Quran, you have to sacrifice some things for it. So that is for the adults that want to memorize Quran. You can also be like that. So I was talking about when I was 30. What about those that are more than 30 and are memorizing Quran? You have history of people like that. So it, there is no age barrier in terms of Quran memorization, but it is worth sacrificing for. Somebody can take one, two years away from his life and dedicate it towards to Quran. If you are not able to do that, dedicate hours for it. Be consistent with it. And for the teachers of uh, uh, Quran, we have to be models. So I personally don't like when I interview who said I want to teach people Quran. So and having people problem with his own memorization as well. Some Ustaz will interview them, will test them. They will say, I've not done revision. So I don't like, because I want you to be models. So it will be easy for your students to follow your, follow your step and to emulate you. If you yourself have your Quran intact, you understand? So keep on revising and let the Quran be with you. Then let us facilitate it for the students that are learning with us because it is not easy so what is not easy for us we don't understand arabic we are not in an enabling what environment we are not where they give people tea when they are memorizing quran so we can also do uh, things like that let us make it easy for people so don't let us uh, scare them away with cane and also torture them so because quran itself is what is train us memorizing quran so we, we just try to make it easy for them and facilitate it for them. We keep on reading for them, reading for them until they get it. And don't let us uh, take with levity issue of recitation, correct recitation. It is very important. That is compulsory. Not everyone that wants to memorize Quran will be able to memorize Quran. But let people know how to recite Quran correctly. So I know that you all have learned from what I know his story and today I've showed you how rigorous is, you know, is the, the day of a day in his life is from going to from teaching in the morning, you know, to going to school, come back, come back to teach again, go to Juma, you know, and it's a lot of you know a lot of things. And he was also a die apart from being a person of the Quran. So I hope that you all have learned from this and you're gonna emulate everything you've learned from him in your daily activities. Because that's the main reason why we are doing this. I've learned also and also you guys should be coming and that's the main reason why we are doing this. Bazakumba for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And so I'm to have a tattoo.